Good afternoon. It's nice to see all of you friends. Some of you are new friends, and some of you I've known longer. You're not old friends, just friends I've known longer. Welcome to Mules 101. <laughs> We're going to share with you everything that I know, everything that our panel knows, and everything that everyone in this room knows. So that's why it's 101, and it's going to be everything you ever wanted to know. To my far right is R.A. Pendergrass, and <clears throat> it's my understanding that down on the Bakersfield Bayou that R.A. and his family have had mules for years and years and years and years. That's and we're going to get into more information about his kind of mule because I do know enough to know there's different kinds of mules. <laughs> Sitting next to R.A is Cindy Nelson, and Cindy and her husband, Jerry, the gentleman on the corner over here, wave Jerry, where you're on candid camera, are from near St. Joe, and if any of you know where Cameron is, Kathleen will give you a bottle of water as a prize. <laughs> See, Lisa <laughs> Miller. She was always somebody. And then sitting in the center, and that's because he likes to be the center of attention. Oh, yeah. That's no joke. Is Always Richard <laughs> Richie Demand from Centerville, and he has he is the person who has coordinated and organized the mule jumping here every year, I believe, since it began. Yes. So, Richie and Cindy and Jerry and R.A., welcome. Thank you. Thank you. The format that I've just created is that each of them is going to talk a little while if they want to, pass it on down, then they can ask each other questions or any of us can ask them questions. And then if we still have time at the end, you can tell us your long lost stories. Does that sound reasonable? Okay, let's see. Richie, let's start with you. Tell us everything you know about mules. Well, we'll be here for a while. Uh, that will take about five, about five minutes. Well, uh, I started out with mules actually when I was a teenager. Can you hear me all right? I started out with mules when I was a teenager, uh, skidding logs. And then uh, later on in life, uh, we started coon hunting, and then I, I got a mule that would jump all the time, and uh, so I got involved with uh, jumping the mule, and I, that's how I met Matt. Matt's dad, he met. We met at Altenburg, Missouri. There's a mule jump they call it to East County Fair. Is that right, Matt? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and uh, and actually going to different stories. I, I, we even uh, turkey hunted on my mules and uh, the mule jumped and that's how I met his dad. He come down to uh, from Illinois and uh, we took him turkey hunting on mules. See, he talked about a whole bunch of different kinds of mules. He yeah. talked about a jumping mule, he talked about a trail riding mule, he talked about a hunting mule, he talked about a riding mule. No, working mules. Working mule, forgot working that. Mules, I, I didn't hear skis. Oh, wait just a minute. I didn't hear too much work involved in any of those. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, if you ever skid logs, it, it, that, that was work. Can, yeah. can I tell one story about skidding? For a quarter. Okay, for a quarter. Uh, skidding, skidding logs, back in the early days, they didn't use lines. You know what I'm talking about? They All the mules, you, you, you probably know what I'm talking about. It was, uh, it was Jay and Kamir for left and right, or G and Hall for left and right. Well, my brother, he he was skidding logs, and he he had come from uh, the city, and he you know uh, come down and work with us. And I was helping my dad, and my dad said, uh, "Would you look at that?" And I turned around. I was on the back of a log truck helping my dad place the logs, and my brother was skidding the logs, but the mule. Uh, would take his time to go right or left and he would tighten up them chain, trace chains. You, you want to know what I'm talking about? Trace chains, they go to the, they go to the uh, pulling of the tongs and he'd take his time. It was Jim and Jim. The mule's name was Jim and my brother's name was Jim. And I can think of several stories that go with that too, so, Richie, but go ahead. But, this may take a while. <laughs> especially about anyway, the especially about anyway, helping you. Uh, Matt's probably not heard this story, but he, he's getting ready to hear it. Anyway, my brother would say, yay, Jim. And my that old Jim would start tightening up chains, and he'd take his time and get ready to pull. And about the time the mule would say to, to go, he'd say, come here. 
<laughs> well, Jamil knew that Yay and come here, so he'd start going to the left. <laughs> well, that went on a couple of times, two or three times, and finally my brothers, he got aggravated, Jamil got aggravated, and my, my brother said, you know what I mean, and I'll never forget it. That old, you know, they wore them blinders. That mule turned around and looked at my brother. He didn't know what you know what I mean. He knew what Dave and there was, but he didn't know what you, you know what I mean. That's a wonderful story, and I do understand that mules are smarter than horses. They are, and maybe lots of other. Well, people that's my too. opinion. That's, right. that, we're mule people. You, you, you well, know, we'll, we'll, <clears throat> afterward we'll meet and exchange yeah. gloves or something like that, because I grew up in a family of horses, not mules. So not. Okay, so Cindy, you want to talk to us? This, you want to tell us a story about living with Jerry or Honestly. working mules? <laughs> okay, that one's trouble. Okay. But for um, <laughs> mules, um, I tr we travel around. We own Crooked Creek Mule Company out of Cameron, Missouri. And they have a big, big trailer filled with mules. No, that's a, that's that's, that's, the, that's our this is our small trailer. It okay, passed okay. and it passed and it passed me on the highway. <laughs> I, you know, I usually go to a show or uh, a clinic with 15, 20 heads. Yeah, we, we do Missouri State Fair, we do Iowa Horse Fair, we do um, uh, Kansas Equifest. Uh, we uh, travel with a lot of our with a lot of our animals. We How take, long have you done that, Cindy? Me, myself, I have been at it for about eight years. Jerry, same time? Nope. No, 57. <laughs> No. I, I, I'm 58 he, years old. I started he, cooking up his whole, fa his whole family. family. I'm the fifth generation of my family. Okay. I, I married into it. Like I said, I was I was a horse person. I was I was tried and true horse person. I'd go to a sale barn to you know to find find you know find something, and I would I would walk past the donkeys. I would walk past the mules. I would never own one of them damn things. Now, <laughs> so now, these all belong to Jerry. So if you want to buy a mule afterward, you no, no, no. <laughs> these, 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 uh, there's a uh, there's a two of them are mine, and and two of them are his. Um, we have uh, we have one we have one out there. You'll see her here in a little bit. Her name's Benita. I, I go to uh, Panther Creek Trail Rides um, in Tuscumbia, Missouri once a year in October for a, it's called Rouge and Rogue, it's an all women's retreat. I do a small clinic there, you know, and about mule jumping and stuff, because that's, that's what I do. And um, there's an animal communicator there. I've heard of a horse whisperer, is this you kind of the you same? You ain't going to tell that, are you? <laughs> I, no, this, this, is the, this, is, this is the worst story, but it, it's, it's, it's a good laugh. Um, her, name's, her name's Melanie. She's a wonderful woman, and she is so spot on. Like, I was, I was skeptic. I was complete skeptic until I talked to this woman, and she, like, I had four mules with me, and she went through and talked to all of them, and it was like, oh, my gosh. But she, uh, we got Benita out here, and she's a rescue. Uh, What's husband, a rescue meal mean? Uh, she was. Remember, this is meal one on one. Miss <laughs> Miss Benita and um, what is two others? Two uh, others. I got a phone call from the sheriff one morning. Uh, would you please bring your trailer? It took me three hours to catch the two mules, all three mules. But uh, I do a lot of animal rescues: horse, mule, donkey, whatever. And all over the state. All it's over the county. Our we're next, needed, our next trip is to the slaughterhouse. Yeah. Do you do that too, Richie? No. No. You rescue me. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, he's right. I'll take a mule or a horse that nobody can do anything with. Give me a little time with it. I can put my two-year-old grandson on it. No problem. So do you whisper to the, your mules? Oh, I whisper a lot. <laughs> do you yell at your mules? No, I don't raise my voice to my animals. Cindy? I'm, I'm going to go no comment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, Miss Miss Benita, I had taken her and Miss my Miss Kitty. She's she's the one that I jump all the time. And uh, I had Benita out there, and I I brought her in for this communicator and stuff. And it's like I'm like, you know, we we haven't jumped her for a while. It it been what five years since five Billy six, since yeah. Billy since my son my youngest son jumped her, and um, he got out of it, got into cars. Like right, right at this moment, he is a car show. Um, <laughs> so uh, 
she started talking to Benita and stuff, and Benita, she said Benita complained about um, the young kid that used to jump her. She was really disappointed in him and, and stuff like this. And we had, I hadn't said nothing. This is fresh mule. I had never taken her down there before, never talked to anybody about her. And she talked about um, the old man that fed her was slow and um, usually after dark, which was talking about Jerry's dad. And then uh, she said that, I'm like, does Benita have any questions for me? And she said Benita wanted to know if I was gonna start, we were gonna start taking her more places because she really liked to travel and she really liked jumping. And I'm like, well, I don't know because Kitty's my number one. And when I said Kitty was my number one, she whipped around and kicked me. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. You're my number one, but you know, I'm, I'm not gonna tell her any different, but you know. Um, okay, all right, you have a story about your mules that will beat that one? No, I don't, I don't have a story that will beat that one. But we had, we had working mules, and they were big. Working what? Work. No. Work, oh, uh, well, one, one, summer, one summer, basically, I plowed corn. A cultivator, one row cultivator, and I plowed corn and plowed corn, and then it was time to start all over again and plow them all again. Uh, but we did do some logging with them, and we were a little different. We did use reins. Now, we talked to them basically G Hall, but we did have reins. But if it was rough, a lot of brush and stuff, sometimes I would just drop the reins, and the mules were trained enough that they would go to the wagon. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, uh, to the truck and basically put themselves in the right position. So they were they were very well trained. But I was a little uh, softer tone than my dad, a little maybe not quite as uh, temperamental. So I kind of inherited training them for when they were young. And I will tell a story about one of them. Oh, probably not quite two years old, and I broke into bleed and all that. I had to ride, and you just jumped on. There wasn't any saddle or anything. You just jumped on the back. And Dad told me to go over on a neighbor's field and uh, look for some cows. It was probably about a mile over a creek through the woods to another patch of woods and stuff. And that worked out great until I got off way over there to <laughs> shut the gate, and the mule got loose. Beat you back to the house? No, the mule would go <laughs> about 50 foot and stop. Yep. And I would, get, I would get within about three steps of the rain, and the mule would go another 50 feet. <laughs> we did this for probably a mile. I don't think I used any inappropriate words, but I okay. probably did. <laughs> and I definitely thought of them. And, uh, but when we got to the creek, that was when I really wanted to say something because that was he was my transportation across the creek <laughs> and uh, so that, i remember that mule to this day that was a long slow walk I I bet. Bet. Yep. Yep. okay richie let's have your best story well, my best story best story that's a scary dog yeah <laughs> no he's gonna have to think about it <laughs> <laughs> well m my best recent story would uh if most of you don't know, but the, the, within the last year, I, I, I battled sickness I, from a heart from a heart attack to, to COVID and uh, pneumonia. And my best story was how things worked out with uh, Pedro uh, last fall in October. Pedro, he, I hadn't got to mess with him very much because of my sickness, but uh, I was still on oxygen, wasn't I? Mm -hmm. I was still on oxygen and I went to the Pea Ridge Meal Jump and uh, actually the last 15, 20 minutes they brought oxygen to me so that, so that I could finish the jump. But Pedro won the Pea Ridge, they call it the, what do you call it, the Pro Division. Pro Division, Pro Division yeah, and the, the capital. They call this jump the, the, the Mule Capital of the World. Pea Ridge, yeah, Arkansas? Pea Ridge, yeah. Arkansas. Yes, ma'am. And to win that, I've been there three times and I won it the third time and to, to me that I mean that thrilled me because I want to tell you what a year a year and a half ago when I uh, they called this the Widowmaker uh, it clogged and I laid on the ground with, with 
no uh, flow at all through my other heart. So I, I, I'm thankful to the good Lord for, for being here. Were you at a BO job? And I was at no, I was at a, no, not when it happened. I was in, I was working with my son, but uh, but the best story is that it, uh, of all that through all the sickness, I'm doing really good now. Good. Uh, Carolyn's got a list of jobs for me. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, I, 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 but that's that's one of the good stories of last year. Uh, and Pedro is only 47 inches tall, and he replaced my old mule Clyde, Kathleen. Yep. I started out with Clyde here, and he was a good jumper. But anyway, uh, Pedro, just 47 inches tall, and he can jump about 62. Now, he's been known to jump 64. Yeah, he's gone 64 inches. But, yeah. but with me, he's, he, he hasn't done that yet. But. I've heard of a 70 high jumper. So what's the highest jump that's ever been done? I think that's it. 74 no, inches no, tall. No, uh, it was uh, Powder River, and she was, it was 72.5. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And she holds the record. Yep. Okay. Your Pedro can jump how high? Pedro's 47 inches. To, well, almost 48 inches, but he can jump 61 and a half, 62 in competition. He's seen him jump 64. I jumped him 64 one time. We 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 owned Pedro before Richie did. So why did you sell him to Pedro? Why did you sell Pedro to him? Well, we'll get to that. We'll get that. We'll get Five. to that in a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a real story. Yes, ma'am, there is. I hate that meal. I hate him too. <laughs> okay, well, Richie, why do you that. like him so well? <laughs> Me and him just clicked. Hey, I think he was a. It, I don't know how you all feel on religion, but I think it was a God thing that uh, my old meal Clyde. Uh, we started out with him here years ago, and uh, he died at 32. Clyde's been gone, what, three years, three, four years, and, and uh, he, me and him was buddies, And uh, but when he died, I didn't have nothing really to jump, and then I, I got Pedro from Jerry and them, and they he didn't like them. I didn't, I didn't like you either. So. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a mutual uh, understanding. So do you think you whisper to Pedro? I do. I talk to him. You just want to talk to a tree out the back end. Matter matter of fact, uh, uh, it, here, here again, most of you know me by me old jump preacher. And this 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 happened to the night this see I, I got I got advantage on beating you guys. Well, I went to a, I went to a, a old Brush Harbor meeting tent revival, and I took Pedro there, and I told him I said I've been having problems with Pedro all season. <laughs> he just start he he's uh, not jumping over 51 inches. I want I want you to pray for him. So they prayed for Pedro the night before the Pete night Ridge before Pete Ridge Mule Jump, and uh, so uh, and he beat me at 51 inches. He stopped. So I let him back out there. You get two tries. We'll, we'll explain a little bit about the rules. Most of these jumps that you go to, they they have a cert, uh, square. It's twelve foot, ain't it? Twelve foot. Back. It depends on where you go. It's, usually, it's, country, it's usually a twelve foot by twelve foot box. Missouri State Fair is an eight foot box. Yeah. And so he wouldn't jump at fifty one inches, and so I had another try. So I let him back out there, and I whispered in his ear. What did you say? I said, do you remember they prayed for you last night? <laughs> I said, I'd really like to win this. And you know what? He turned around there, and he he never missed a jump. He never even balked, did he? Mm -hmm. After that, yeah. he went ahead and won, won the jump at 57 and a half inches. Mm -hmm. So usually, I'll, I'll explain this, and we can go on to, to, to how it is, but usually they do it at an inch at a time, or sometimes two inches at a time. They'll raise the gate up. And you get two tries, and so after that he never missed a jump, and so and I beat Cindy. Yeah. Well, I beat Kitty. <laughs> yeah, you beat you beat Kitty. We kind of go back and forth, don't we? We, we do, yeah. And I want to tell something else. In our group of, of, of mule jumpers that we have, we're family. You know, that's, that's something what it's goes about. wrong. Something goes wrong. We we, we hug one another. And we we and it wasn't too long ago that uh, Jerry. Uh, and Cindy lost a son, and I come and done the funeral. So we're we're family. The longest uh, battle of the Civil War. You knew that, didn't you? Yep. That friend of mine said they didn't know it was over until '54. Is that right? <laughs> 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 
Bridgie, tell us about how you started the mule jump here at the Old Time Music Festival. Well, Matt, he's he's over there on the, on the screen with us, and uh, you want Matt to share with that, or you want me to share? You start out, and Matt, if he okay. says something you don't like, you can chime in. <laughs> okay. Uh, you actually, heard that, Matt. <laughs> actually, uh, I got a phone call from Matt uh, after he, me and the father we were, were good, real good acquaintances, and I got a phone call from him asking me if I could. And the very first mule jump was just an, it was just a demo. That's what it was. I come down and and it, it was out front up here, and actually old Clive was jumping uphill, and uh, we done I think 58, 60 inches that day, and uh, done pretty good, but. Matt, do you got anything to add? That, that, what year was that, Matt? Are you with us? Come on, get the cotton out of here. Hold on. Go ahead, Matt. Uh, I think that was 2007. 2007. And, uh, the reason the reason it got started was, uh, you know, I had the I had the privilege of working for the West Plains Council on the Arts for several years. And uh, during one of the very first uh, festival committee meetings that I attended, maybe the very first one, Chris Norman said that, uh, that someone recommended uh, trying to incorporate a mule jump into the festival. And I said, uh, you know, that, that, uh, that my, my dad was acquainted with Richie, you know, and uh, Richie's uh, terrific mule jump uh, expert, and so I, I said I'd be happy to call him and see uh, see what we could put together. So, and uh, he's he's been involved ever since, and uh, I know uh, everyone is grateful for that. Well, we are here today. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I, I met your dad at Altenburg, and he done an interview with me when I won the Altenburg with with Clyde, and then and that's how we got together. And you even came up and played music with me one afternoon, didn't you? Yeah, sure did. Really, really enjoyed that. You know, the, the mule jump that, uh, that Richie just mentioned at the East Perry County Fair uh, in Altenburg in, in southeast Missouri uh, is enormous. It's the, the uh, uh, and I'm, I'm sure there are some that are, that are even larger. I think, you know, probably the one at Pea Ridge, Arkansas is, is larger still. But the, the mule jump at the, the East Perry County Fair takes place in an arena that's about the size of a, of a good-sized uh, high school football field. Yes. Uh, and every seat is filled uh, about 30 minutes before the jump starts. Yes. It, has, it has such a big uh, following there. It's, it's a, a standing room only crowd. Uh, the first time I saw that, I, I found it uh, pretty amazing. Matt, when is it held? Uh, is it in September? Yeah. Yeah. The what? Yeah, I think September? it's usually in September. That's right. Yeah. Either second or. Second. If we all become mule followers, Perryville is a really interesting community, and they've done a great deal of community rebuilding. So you can see that as well as watch Richie jump. Uh, Pedro. Cindy, yeah. do you go ahead? Do you travel that far? You go there to Altenburg. Yep. I haven't been to Altenburg, but Kitty, Kitty used to go to her. The the guy that I bought Kitty from, um, he used to jump her and Pedro at Altenburg. How old is Kitty? Kitty is nine. nine. So how at what age can you start jumping a mule? Uh, round three, their their legs and stuff are are pretty well developed, and you don't want to start them a little too soon because they they'll form arthritis and you're you're running them. It's just like just like a training a horse. Okay, how old's Bonita? <laughs> fifteen. Yeah, 10 15, 15, 15, 15, 16. 15, 16 years old. Okay. Pedro's about twelve. Yeah. Okay. And Jerry, you have two mules down there. How old are they? Baxter is twenty three years old. Oh. Uh, Benita's fifteen. Benita's fifteen. Dexter, which I got from this man. 10 or 11? Yeah. 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 You know, I bet they're such good friends that each of them think they get the better deal when they train you. <laughs> uh, that's right. I, I, started I started coming down to this mule show. I missed the first three. The first man I met when I come down here was this man here. Really? That was, what, 15 years ago? It has to be. 
I never knew his name until I met my wife. I brought her down here for the first time. I just knew him, and Matt introduced me to him, Neil Jumping Preacher. That's all I knew him by was the preacher. Didn't know his last name. I didn't know his name. He, he didn't know. No. He didn't know nothing. <laughs> so we were going home from Neil Jump this night, and she kept saying, that Richie is a nice man. That Richie. I finally looked at her and said, who's Richie? Oh, I was, I was like, she goes, oh the man God. you were talking to us, and well, I talked to a bunch of yeah. The little short fat man. <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, that's the preacher. <laughs> that's all I knew his that's name. That's all I knew his name by. And when I found out about Clyde passing away, I told Cindy, I said, I want him to have Pedro. Because Clyde reminded me so much of Pedro. Okay. See, that time that's Clyde. why that's why the preacher has him. Okay. Well, I, why does that's, the that's another that level attitude. there you can get into. Yeah. The personality of a mule has a lot to do with you. It does. It's it really, really does. So who does the talking may make a difference in how high the mule jumps. They'll, they'll, the crowd has a lot to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> the crowd really? for, for Pedro. All mules are different, but for, for Pedro, when that crowd gets to going. Mm -hmm. He gets to going. He, that old tail starts to switching, and, and, and Clyde was the same way. Do you pipe in people's voices to the arena? Well, I don't have to. Yeah, we, <laughs> usually, yeah we, usually, we usually don't have to. Okay. All right. Um, what is the furthest you've traveled to a mule jump, and why did you travel that far? Mississippi for me. I've done Mississippi State Fair last year. I was a halftime show between the mule pool and the horse pool in Mississippi. It was about eight, eight nine hours, wasn't it? Nine. Jackson, Mississippi. Does, does your Pedro do anything besides jump? He eats. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like pulls or trails or any of those other things? Or is that corrupting your meal if you do I that? I tell you what, Pedro is really hard to catch. That's what you said, Jerry. He's really hard to catch. You got one, yeah, you one fella asked me one time, he said, Preacher, he said, I'm going to buy me a mule. He said, do you have any advice? And I said, yeah, I do. I got advice for you. He said, what's that? I said, you get up early in the morning and drink you about five or six cups of coffee because you, you're going to be, and think about it, because if you buy a mule, you'll be thinking from now on. But you can't get it. <laughs> that's that's yeah. You just got to think ahead. To get, to get my Pedro caught, I, I call him up and I feed him every day, and so he just thinks he's getting fed until the gate closes, and then he'll look and say, well, I'm done. Does he kick? Does he kick? I haven't had him kick me yet. No. Dexter. Dexter. The, we were a PFI mule jump that they put on up there about three years ago. It's been more than three years. Three or four, whatever it was. But I kept bugging uh, Preacher about Dexter. I, I said, here's the deal. Him. I said, I'll trade these two little white mules for Dexter. Okay. And we come over here to the jump. He come up and his arm was all swollen. He said, Dexter broke my arm, which he did, broke his forearm. And he goes, he's yours now. I said, okay. And we we just kind of have a running thing back and forth. He's kind of like my father. So we're constantly poking and prodding one another. If he wins, he wins. If I win, that's cool. Uh, we're just one big heavy family. That's great. And that's, that's what it's all about. I'm raising my grandkids in the same way. They love doing stuff with the mules. Uh, I have a draft mule at home. She stands 18'3 and weighs 2,700 pounds. I looked at the other day, and my two-year-old grandson climbed over the gates, climbed up on his back, and she started screaming at me from the porch. He was fine. Oh, yeah. He's perfectly oh, yeah. fine. Okay, now what's your draft mule do? Uh, I have carriage, carriage service. Carriage service. Uh, like preacher, I drag logs. Okay. Uh, every once in a while, I'll still go out and cut hay. Okay. With her, Ray Kay. Do any of you participate in trail rides with your? Oh yeah, oh. I, I have trail rides. Okay. Too. I got a fox yeah. trot mule. I uh, ride. We we got oh, mules that do everything. Yep. Fox trotting mule. Yeah, I sure do. I grew up in the fox trotting capital of the world. Yep, Avon, Missouri. Avon, yep. Missouri. Yep. 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 That's right. I have a friend of mine. He is, his trail mule is out of a Paso Pino mare. Okay. And once that mule hits that gate, you can't ask for a smoother ride. Yeah. That's, okay. that's where we'll get into the personality of, of mule people. You know, a lot of you, you tease a lot of folks about it, and they, when they get into uh, mule will grow, mule will, will grow on you. You, you, you 
know, you get a, a real close relationship, a personal relationship with most of them, and uh, they'll serve you. My grandpa used to say a mule would serve you all his life to kick you once to kill you. But, yeah. but anyway, the thing of it is, if you mistreat one, they remember it. They will get you. Yep. It may take them 20 years, but they'll they're, they're just They're just like, they're like elephants is what I try to, like, we do stuff for the inner city kids at Kansas City, and uh, they have a farm day at uh, the American Pale Arena. And uh, we'll take our mules up there and we'll talk to the kids and stuff. And the way I describe my jumping mules, it's like they're, they're, they're professional athletes. They're treated like professional athletes. They're fed like professional athletes. You know, like um, I have mules like Kitty, Dexter, Baxter, Bonita. The only thing they do is jump. And what do they eat? Uh, you name it. We have, I have a special mixture of a couple different feeds that I give them. Molasses? Uh, uh, there's a little bit of molasses in with their oats and stuff, and then they get, uh, uh, Kitty gets a special vitamin. Um, Baxter gets a uh, little bit of a, a senior kind of feed because he's 23. Um, and then, you know, we've got Coco, which is our draft mule. We take her to the Iowa Horse Fair, and she's uh, in their avenue of breeds. We've got, uh, we got everything from uh, Miss Beanie, which is, she's 30, 34, inches. 34 36 inches tall, um, to Coco, which is 18, 18 to 18. And, and each each of our mules does jobs. We have, you know, we've got our ride mules. We've got our, you know, games mules, trail mules, pulling mules. You know, we've got. How many there. mules do you have? Eighteen. About eight, yeah, eighteen. What other jobs do you have? <laughs> <laughs> oh my. I I I am I am the only professional mule jumper, female mule jumper, in the state, in, the nation, in in the, that you go. Yeah. Wow. So, That's quite um, something. She, she's hard to beat. <laughs> yes, she is. So do you ride your mules at all? Yeah. The, ju the jumping mules? No. Uh, we do a lot of ponying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And either I'll hook them behind the pickup, we'll take a little jog yeah. down the road. Or now, Clyde, I did. I rode Clyde from, uh, up from the Mississippi River to the Kansas line. 98, I rode all the way across Missouri. Why? Because you could? Well, yeah. <laughs> Why did you really? Why? Uh, it's a personal thing between me and the Lord. And okay. We were talking one time, and, and uh, he told me to walk right across Missouri. And I, so I did, and I even had to plan for it because I want to tell you what someone says they ride 50 miles on a mule. In a, they, they ridden, if they ride 50 miles in a day, you rode. And I had to ride an hour or two a day to get, my, get me. And my meal's ready for it, and I did it, Carolyn, 13, 13 days, and I, I rode across. Tom, you have a question? So did you go down Highway 160 when you were going across? I ran 60 until I got on the other Shucks, side. Shucks, Tom, Hill. you thought you had something <laughs> going here. I know. Yeah, I did. I started, I started, well, actually, I rode halfway one way, and then I come back and rode the other way. But I started to Van Buren on 60 on the other side of the bridge and rode all the way to Kansas. And then I turn around and come back, and then and that rode uh, back then. Illinois. So if you rode that horse that much, why don't you ride your other mules? I do. Oh, you do. I've got one. I, I do quite a bit riding. I got one mule that's a gated mule. Her name's Diamond. She's uh, 14 hands, and she's black with white, four white socks. And and uh, I can't because of my back working in. I, I was also a miner for 26 years in the lead mines, and I but my back's kind of. I need a gated mule, and uh, she don't hurt my back. And she, she can keep beautiful. up there with the fox trot. Oh, she will. Anytime. She, can, she, she is will. beautiful. She's, she's got a beautiful, he's a beautiful mule, uh, great disposition. She's got a good head on her shoulders. Uh, you can't ask for a better mule for her. She is so pretty. Okay, let's talk about um, the relationship. Uh, Richie, you kind of alluded to it between your mule and, and you. Anyone else want to comment about relationships with each of theirs, RA? Well, some of the relationships are good, and some are bad. <laughs> <laughs> and you're not joking. Most, are you going to stick with that story, most, RA? Yeah, most, well, I'll, I'll talk about one particular team that we had. They were probably 
17 hands or something, and I'm a short person. If I stand up a little, you'll imagine how short I was at 10. So I figured out how to get my reins, so I'd put them around the aim yeah. and time just right, and that could be a stirrup. So I yeah. could climb up the harness onto the mule, and Kate and Diner and Kate, we'd just go to the house or wherever. Diner, we would go a few feet, and then we would buck. And we did that for probably two or three years. She never did <coughs> decide it was okay for me to write. He and didn't. Dad, he didn't whisper the right words in her ears. <laughs> <laughs> and dad, dad had a broken leg that one summer, and he was sitting on the porch, and he he said, "You know, quit trying to ride the mule." But I was out in the field. He's on the porch, so I climb up on the mule and we go away, and the, the rain breaks. So I am, I don't have a rein to control this mule, and this mule is gonna buck real soon. So I jump off. And when I get to the house, he doesn't say a word, doesn't discipline me. He just looks at me and just kind of grins like, okay, you learned, you learned, learned, a, lesson, you learned a valuable lesson. You learned on those two, but Kate and, Kate and Diner were the two that I worked sometimes all summer long, so. Okay. And they were, they were friendly. Diner was just more standoffish. But Kate was anything and everything. It was like a good friend. Did you own more than 18 mules? No, we never had over three or four at a time. We basically had a, a team of mules, a team of horses, maybe two teams of horses. So when we would plow, like mother and dad and myself, so there'd be three going around the field with a turning plow and uh, Usually three mules would be the most. Okay. And uh, well, I'll tell a jumping one because my my dad would have thought, you know, no, 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 you can't have a jumping mule on a, a farm. <laughs> you have to be able to work. Feed. Has to be able to pull the plow. Yeah, no. And uh, but he got he got a mule from somebody, and he turned it loose in the lot. Yep. And it went over that fence. Yep. Yep. And over the next fence. And all the way to the far end of our farm, and for some reason stopped. But mother had to talk with dad, and eventually, with the help of the dogs, they got the mule back into the corral, and it went into the pickup and went somewhere. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where. I don't it, think Richie rescued that one. No, <laughs> so, I tell you, tell you what, when uh, uh, when mule jumping started, you know it, that was open range. Yeah. Everybody let their stock. You you kept your stock in, you know, and uh, because everything else was an open range. Yeah. And uh, the, but when mule jumping started was when the, they they closed open range and the coon hunters would go coon hunting. Right. And they they a lot of your mules were natural jumpers. Yeah. Old Clyde, when I got him for my brother, uh, the only way he'd come home and and his mule the mule would be gone. But you know where he was at. He was down to the neighbors where the horses was at, and he, what is a mule's mama? It's a horse. That's right. So they would go, they would go to, to there and then, uh, to the neighbors, and so he got a little Shetland pony and kept it with Clyde, and as long as Clyde had feed water, <coughs> three fence, and the a good pony. fence, and a little and a buddy, whatever it was, and he'd stay in. Interesting. But Clyde, Clyde, I could put Clyde in a. Uh, six foot round pin by himself the next morning he'd be gone. He'd be out there for the rest of it. Yeah. How many mules do you have, Richie? I have five. Five. Five mules. That's probably the least I've had in a while. Okay. Since this is this is a cultural thing, I did observe and they were talking about trading a while ago, that mule trading is a cultural experience. Yep. Go ahead and they tell us about that cultural I didn't, I didn't get I think this means that R A got suckered, but we'll see. <laughs> Go ahead, all right. Well, I didn't, I never got to see a complete deal because I had chores and farm work, but I observed a, a person would come to the farm early in the morning and he and dad would catch mules and they'd look them over and they'd talk about them and they'd pet them and stuff. And then they would start talking about all kinds of other things and the mules was there. And then after a while they said, well, let's see how this mule works. So they would horse the mule, and they'd drive the mules around a little bit, 
and then it would be lunchtime, and mother would have been queued, you know, to have lunch for an extra person, and they might have talked about price just before lunch. Oh, that early? <laughs> yeah, maybe. And then after lunch, well, let's work. On, let's see how they really do. Is this going to be okay? Then they would talk about price, and it basically was an entire day, and I think maybe it was just. The seller and the buyer both wanted a day off from work. It really was a social <laughs> event, though. It was a social event. Oh. Is it still that way, Richie? Yeah. It's a lot of fun to trade, especially when you make a good trade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But I don't hear it. it can I, happen can I tell you just a little small story? Go ahead. Kind of, it did that way. A uh, fellow come by, uh, neighbor, and he said, hey, I've seen that nice view out there. He said. Uh, Which one was it? I don't know. Oh. This is a story. Oh. <laughs> I thought all your stories you were based on facts, you, though. You can believe this or you, you don't have to believe this. <laughs> believe it or it's an old mule trainer story. Yeah. This Go story ahead. Is, and the fellow said, well, he said, that, that, that mule, he said, he don't look good. He, well, he said, he looks good. He said, he, he's a good looking mule. He said, I'm telling you, that mule don't look good. He said, so he bought the mule, took it home, and he called him up, and he said, hey, that mule's blind. I told you he couldn't look good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Cindy. Yes, ma'am. Talk to me about selling your mules. Selling? Mm -hmm. Very seldom. Yeah, it's very it's very seldom. I mean, we get one in there. We, we'll, we'll get one every once she in a while. She buys from me. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just bought a... a a trail mule from him here was well, last year. She is amazing. I I. Uh, so how did you train her? Uh, I got stuck with a bunch of saddles and tack, and I had. Well, actually, I have a trailer at the house. I have a trailer full of saddles. That is tack. full of tack. That I have more tack than I have animals, and I'm like. I really wanted the mule, and I'm like, well, you know, I'm like, I'm kind of short right now, and he's like, well, what do you got? And I'm like, hell, I got, I got a whole bunch of, I got a saddle, like a bridle, like a pad, you name it, I got it. What do you want? He goes, well, bring it over. I'm like, okay. So we, I met him with it, and I got me a mule. Yeah, she called me, I got a mule, I'm coming home. Okay. So okay, what about she, you, Jerry? Oh, uh, she, she's a real good mule, because we, um, I, I had bought other mules from other people and stuff, and I. How I, large a group are you talking about when you say we kind of trade with each other? How many others are there? There's about three or four. But yeah, there's about oh, about three or four of the people I five. really trust. Okay. Um, you know, as far as as far as like jumping mules are concerned, you know, there is um, there's only a handful of us, you know, professional mule jumpers, and um, they're really hard to find. They they are hard to find. I mean, you've got uh, you got Les Clancy out of he's in St. James, Missouri now. He was in Ozark. Um, he has Ozark that's a name I know. He's yep. a, he has Ozark Mule Days at, in Springfield coming up at the end of September uh, Labor Day weekend. Labor Day weekend. Labor Day weekend. He actually holds the record here at 67 and a half inches. Yep. Yeah. With two mules, it was rain, really raining real bad one day out here, and we had to call it off. But they were tied. And uh, 67 and a half inches, and that's that's our record here. Oh, it is. Yeah. But that's close to the. If you said it was 72 close and a half, yeah. that's pretty it close is. to yeah. the record. Yeah. Record. Yeah. 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 And then she actually jumped here one year. Powder River jumped here one year, yeah. and she did. She held the record until uh, at 64 inches here until uh, last beat it. Yeah. With two mules. Well, what what was his name? One Luke and Sadie. Sadie. Luke I was hoping he'd be here today. Corporal yeah. Luke. Corporal, Corporal Luke. Luke. Yeah. He is actually, uh, he was uh, in the military. He, he was uh, 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 National Guard. Yeah, National, National Guard. Guard. He's got a brand on him. Yeah, he has a brand, yeah. he has he a has brand his, on him. He's retired. He's retired. He's yeah. retired. He's retired. He yeah. retired. Is there any uh, pattern or formula that you all use when you name a mule? I just kind of let it. Attitude. Yeah, what their attitude it's, it's, shows. It's their attitude. They're, it's, you call them hey you for a year? Oh, and other words. But, um, Quite a few. <laughs> but that long before you really no, name it? You know, my big sorrow cold I ride all the time and I work cattle on, uh, 
I'm from up around Kearney, Missouri, and, and uh, he just kind of, he's got a laid back attitude and everything, so, all right, I'm gonna call you Jesse. See, see, and it matches. It, I, it I'll, fits try, it. I'll try not to tell one more story. I like your stories. Go ahead. <laughs> Since you're talking about names, I, I had a, a friend that lived down the road from me, and his name was Freddie Barnes, and he kind of talked funny. And he come to my house, and there's two, my brother Don, he's a real good jumper, and then, of course, me, I'm Richie, and he knocks on the door, and he says, he says, hey, Donnie. And I said, my, I'm Richie. He said, okay, Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> and we go through this, you know, for a little bit. And he said, I hear you, you got a mule. I said, no, Donnie's got one. And he said, okay, Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, we get him, get him away from my house. And he goes, what's, my brother lives about 30 miles away. And he get, goes to his house and they go through the same thing, Donnie and Richie. He just keeps calling him Richie. <laughs> but anyway, he does it. My brother does have a mule for sale. And, uh. Uh, old Freddie Barnes, he says, I'll tell you what, he said, I'll be back in a little while. And so he come back, and sure enough, he come back, and he said, I want $1,000 for this mule. He says, so they went through all, you know, like you said, the trading and the horse trading and everything. So we come come to the name. He said, by the way, Freddie, he said, Freddie, he said, her name is Julie. And he said, preacher, my brother's a preacher too. He said, preacher, he said, before I get done with this mule, it'll be called many names, and you won't like any of them. <laughs> so. I'll probably shut up. I got you. No, that's <laughs> okay. A preacher can't say those words. No. So, where do you go after here? Where do we go? Uh huh. Um, do you go back to the farm? Yeah, we'll go back to the well, farm for a we, couple weeks. We actually we stayed at Panther Creek uh, in Tuscumbia, Missouri last night. We'll stay there. We'll be going home. When is that next? When is that in Panther Creek? Panther Creek uh, Midwest Mule Fest is in September. September. I was just curious if there was a constant flow of jumps. There used to be. There's, there's, there's just a handful of them left now. But okay. there, is that there, Tyler like, like No. No, I just went it's a di It's a dying art form. Tell them you're kind of getting it strummed up again. You're, you're going to be uh, doing one in, in October in Oklahoma. Yeah, we'll be doing one in October in Oklahoma. Henry at Oklahoma is having their first mule and donkey trade days. Uh, it's paying some good money. It's more friends that we've met along the way that have mules. We know it's a long way for you to come. I said, don't worry, we'll be there. What about the preacher? I said, I think I can drag him down there. <laughs> I'm but, seeing Richie jumping right along behind them. But there used to be mule jumps at least two, three every month when okay. I was a kid growing up. It's just kind of dwindled down. I told Richie and Matt, as long as they do this mule jump, I live six hours from here. I don't care. I'll be here. Okay. Uh, Les does one. <coughs> down those are mule days. I'll do anything in the world for Les Clancy. Yeah. I will be at that one. I've been going to Pea Ridge, Arkansas for 20 years. And now we're getting ready to start hitting red ass. As long as you want us there, I'll bring however many mules you want. Those are all four or six hour trips. Aren't yeah, they? yeah. Right. We're, talking about, we're talking about we're talking about going together to Bishop. Talking about Bishop next year we're talking about going to Bishop, California. That's a big they, one. Yeah. They just had their mule show, and, and Ben Tennyson that does Western Mule Magazine, he said, Jerry, I need to talk to you. I go, what's wrong? He goes, the winning jump to call yourself a world champion was 46 inches this year. National champion. National champion. Really? And Ben told them guys, says, wait till the boys from Missouri get here. They just <laughs> getting started. So I told him, I said, uh, don't pay your own trailer. We're going next year. Okay, what do you get paid for the highest jump? Um, Maybe it reached was 1200 Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If I wanted to buy a mule this afternoon. You better have your checkbook, savings account, and everything else ready. <laughs> If so I went to you, what is your best price for a meal today? And what am I getting? I've turned ten thousand dollars down for my meal. That's his right meal. That's my right meal. Okay. What about uh, one of these Dexter that you're gonna jump today? No, they're not for sale. They're none of these. Not that's, for sale. That, that's those meals out there are my kids. Okay. So is Pedro, even though I hate the meal. <laughs> but they're like my kids. Okay. All of my, all of, all eighteen of my meals are my kids. Chasing that damn thing. So I you have, got one kid you don't like. 
for ten thousand dollars i can have it uh, that's just it i may not like it you may like it you may take it home then you may be calling me in a couple of days come and get this blessing it just it okay, depends I'll come get it. each each animal each mule has their own personality like yeah, but I don't know anything about a mule. I just drive up to your and you'll be barn. And you'll be educated you will, you with your first mule. Really <laughs> with your first mule, you will be educated. Really quick. Well, I want to know if I want to just stay at your barn or if I want to go on down the road and find somebody else's mule. What we have, what we have at our barn, our grandkids can, can mess with. My little two-year-old grandson, he's out there. We, Kitty, Kitty the out there. When we first, when we first. I'd seen this ad on, on Craigslist. These people had these three junk, three these three mules, and a junk for sale. And I'm like, on Craigslist. On Craigslist. Yeah. On Craigslist. And I, I'm like, I called him up and I'm like, hey, I found this junk. I was not interested in the mules. I we already had. I think we had 13 head at something like that. And I'm like, I don't know. We don't need no more damn mules. So. I drive clear down South Cape Girardeau, by South Cape Girardeau over here, to go look at this junk, and I take my trailer because just in case. Well, it's a big junk, but um, I went down there to buy it, and we get there, and the lady's like, "Well, it's a package deal," and I'm like, "You didn't tell me that on the phone," and <laughs> she's and she gets out, and I'm like, "Fine," I'm like, "Fine." I'll take them. So she has she has this pen. She has this pen. It's uh, it's a little thirty by thirty it, round pen. It ain't even that dang big. It was tiny. She had the jump pushed off to one side of this pen, and she was out there and she had these three mules just to go in. And they jump over this jump, and she had them. She is cracking this whip, and she just. I'm like, look, lady, if I'm loading these things in my trailer, you need to stop because you get them, you're getting them wired up, and I've got to, you know, we got to run them in there, and it ain't working. And the three mules that I went and got, one was Kitty, one was Pedro, and one was, uh, what's his name? Al Albert. 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 Pedro and Albert, they, they look like twins. You couldn't tell them apart, except for one had, uh, Albert had spots, like little tiny spots all over him. And uh, so I, I paid a thousand dollars for Kitty, Pedro, Albert, and this jump. And I ended up not taking the dang jump home with me. I got the three mules and, and left the jump. And that's what I went down there for. Okay. If if I buy the, a mule, do I start in with a certain kind of mule? Do you start in with one that's a trail? Uh, it, a mule it, and then step up to a jumper? I mean, it, is it, there a progression there? It, it, it depends on what you're looking for. Like if you're looking for what, what he had, which was, you know, to plow fields mm -hmm. and, and, and to work and stuff, you know, you know, that, you don't, don't, you don't, want, you don't want to no. go get a jumping mule it. to do that. You don't want to get a riding mule to do that. Let, you want, you want one that's been, you know, worked with. Let, and let, like me, what let me explain, explain a little bit about, you know how the breed of dogs are. Well, a little bit. You have uh, for your for your Jack. You breed a Jack to a mare. Right. Okay. You have your mini. Uh, you, well, your standards. Uh, your minis, the standards, and the mammoth Jack. A mammoth Jack can be 16 hands tall. That's big. And then, mm -hmm. so that's where you get his working. You you breed it to a, a like a Belgian Clydesdale. Your bigger working animal. Oh, that large. And you get, they yeah. get what they call the old Missouri mule. It, it's the, you know most of them are big old sorrel mules and they then they worked them in the fields. Then uh, you start your standard or even your mammoth jack breed to a gated mare. Like that. Or and there's some of them that got, now you're Walker. getting into your western pleasure, your barrel racers. They'll they'll breed the they'll breed the thoroughbreds to thoroughbreds quarter horses. That's where you'll get your different. You see, and then you, now they even when I went to Fort Worth, Dallas. They got a miniature class that they're 36 inches and under, and they're jumping them. So how do you breed that? You get a mini. Um, get your mini you, get, you, you get it bred down just like you would a dog. You get different. You got different styles there, so you can get get you a gated animal or a riding animal or a jumping animal. Now when, I think we when the, us jumpers, now my preference when I want to jump a mule 
It's got to be a little feisty. Got to have a personality. It's got to have, have, have an attitude. It's got to have an attitude. So Most that's of, like a Powder River that holds Potter? record. Powder that's River that holds a... record and died. She was a bucking mule. They yeah. uh, they went around the Vaughn family had bucking mules and she was so honoring nobody ever rode nobody her. Could ride but it. she holds the record in jumping. Okay. Said that you were gonna say something. Uh, he's got a question back there. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, you folks that are keeping mules, do you keep donkeys and burros yourself yeah. for yeah. <laughs> purposes? And you've got them by their you so you've got to know a lot about mules and you've got to know a lot about both sets yeah. of yeah. your parents. That's right. Yeah. We 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 ourselves we do we don't stand a jack. We uh we have enough friends this guy that, that has okay. jacks. If we like we want we want uh it's you want the to find the like we got friends that got gated jacks we got friends that got like regular jacks and stuff but you need to elaborate a little bit on that there the, the, the donkeys are some of them naturally gated yeah, yeah. they got a, they got shoved naturally them. yeah yeah not all of them not all of them not all I didn't know any there, of them. there's there's a few there's a few okay. that but most most have a little bit of a you got your donkey shovel hmm. Go ahead. Can I have another question too? You got touched on it just a little bit. I grew up on a small farm and you end up knowing that uh, you're not handling cattle with ropes and horses. You need to know about molasses and watermelon. <laughs> you can entice a cow into just about anything with uh, grain that's coated in molasses mm -hmm. or watermelon or both. Are, is there any food that mules are just crazy about like cattle are about watermelon or how many of you knew about the watermelon story? Oh, that's mine. Little I watermelon. I'll take the rinds out and I'll throw it out. And they'll, they eat that watermelon like oh, yeah. it's cocaine. Well, mine's <laughs> Believe it or not, mine, just, mine love corn. Yeah. They really love corn. Yeah, work, working mules, you just feed them several ears of corn at lunchtime. And they love it. Right yeah. off the cob. No, we we uh, we feed the certain thing. brands of feed uh, for certain. I've got one mule at home. She's 34 years old. She was what got me started into competition mule jumping. I finally retired her about six years ago, but she has a Is that senior. because her bones would be no, more she, likely to break? She earned the right to be retired. Okay. Yeah. And I just said, okay, I've got Baxter going, I've got this one going. You've earned you've earned the time in Baxter. Okay. So but I just a little sweet feed is all we feed our mules. But depending on age is how depending you determine age, the feet. Yeah. yeah. Tom? One of you said earlier, I thought that the, uh, the Missouri State Fair box was only eight feet yes. square. Yeah. So is it like baseball parks? You know, there's, there's no standard size? No for, standard no. I've, I've been jumping there from one side of the state to the other, and they all have different rules. There's yeah. different rules and different wherever you go. P Ridge, we just have a 12-foot line. Yeah. You bring your mules up, stop the front feet. As soon as those go. front feet cross that cross that line, you're then you can go. You got, but you got to. Your mule the has to come to a stop. All the time, right. it's the back feet. Yeah. Yeah. And you and you can't get out of that box. The the rule. The, okay. The rules are you have uh, you have two attempts to make your jump, and you have one minute per attempt. If you step out of the box. If you knock the bar down, if you go over your one minute limit, that's considered an attempt. Like I said, you got two attempts to do it in. And um, you sure it's one minute or two? No, it's less, one, it's one less minute. Less takes longer than that. It's one minute. <laughs> he takes well, 10 I, minutes or so. <laughs> Radar, he says. He talks, he talks a lot. Radar, he says, come on, come on, at least 50 times. <laughs> oh, I, <laughs> or you, you, come on you. Now, come on now. Just like today, we're just down here to have fun, so we're gonna freestyle. We're just gonna have a good time. How many people are jumping today? You're just looking at us. Oh, well, yeah. okay. okay. Hopefully, well, there's some other people I've been talking to, they'll show up, but we'll see. Okay. There's we'll also see. there's also two different types of, of jumps. There's a, you got competition, which whenever you, uh, you get into the box, you have to come to a complete stop. Your mule has to come to a complete stop before you can jump over that jump. And then there's freestyle jumping, and there's like Pedro and Kitty love the freestyle, which is you could take a 30 foot run at that thing and just fly over it. But ba Baxter, Jerry's mule, 
If you watch him, when you come down to the jumps, if you watch him, he does two step. He will, he'll, he'll lead off with one leg, and just before he jumps, he'll switch it out real quick and then go over. But I trained him the old way I was taught. Uh, for you coon hunting, you know, when you're out in the woods at night, I don't want my mule running up and just jump. I want to get over there and look around, make sure there's no holes or anything they can step in. And that's how I trained him. And that's where the blanket comes that's in. That's where the blanket yeah. comes in. Because you throw it over wood and wire, barbed wire fence, and that can get, keeps them from getting hurt. Now we tangled up in it. We coon hunted on foot. On foot? On foot. Yeah, yeah but when you're leading three dogs and trying to carry four or five coons out of the woods, <laughs> no, it's time to start right You had a good coon dog. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> and, the bri and the briars and waiting. The there you go. Oh, yeah. But it's my understanding. When you get to the fence, you get off, the mule jumps over, and then you, you saddle over, right. and then Follow you, the dog. you get back on. Yep. Okay. That's it. Now, there's quite a few people who hunt coons on mules around here. But you're making me think none of them have jumpers. I, oh, mean, they got I jump, mean, they jump, they but got they're jumpers, not jumpers. Let's say they come to a show like this or come down to Les's. Uh, we've kind of got the reputation, oh, they're just here for the money. No, we're not here for the money. We're here because this is what we enjoy doing. We're one big family, and this is what we like to do. Okay, that does bring up a question. Since I have a microphone, I get to ask the question. <laughs> If you get $1,200, I think you said, for sh placing first here, okay, is that cumulative in terms of jumps in which you participate? I mean, like if you get $1,200 here and you get 2500 down at Pea Ridge and you get, yeah, something up at uh, Kearney, yeah. uh, <coughs> do you add that all up and then you get some kind of recognition from some group? No. Just a pat on the back. Yep, Just pat on the back. Gotcha. Say, hope to see you next year. Okay. And shake yes. a hug. Okay. Yeah. There's not too many pays pays that very seldom. Thousands, twelve hundred. Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, P Ridge pays that. We just pay a hundred and seventy-five and fifty here for two Missouri State classes. Missouri State Fair. You're gonna laugh at this. One. Missouri State Fair. I pay ten dollars. That's just my stall fee per animal. And then I have to pay for my parking pass, which is fifteen dollars. Now I have to pay for my entry tickets for however many days I'm going to be there. You pay them to jump. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. First, First place is eight dollars. Second place is six bucks. Oh yeah. really? That is how much you get at the Missouri State Fair. Well, oh, but you get the prestige. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, because I was just reading the Missouri Realist. And it was talking about Pedro. Pedro I mean, no, uh, radar. 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 And, radar. And the fact that he was this was going to be his last jump. But they, he said this that. is that news. Was, they that said that's not right. last jump two years ago. <laughs> and I, I actually threw the jump out of respect for radar. Well, you said that one, didn't you? Said Heck that. yeah, I did. So this year you'll just oh, pull I, I ain't holding up this year. <laughs> I ain't holding up this year. I want to ask him a question. When, you, when you're, you, you and your parents, uh, plow? Did you plow with a mow board or a disc plow? Mow board is uh, turns it over. No. Yeah. What well, we, we call them turn. turn we call them turn plows. Yeah. Turn and plow. Okay. Twelve inch, fourteen inch, and sixteen. We have one sixteen, but it took it took pretty two, good pair of four <laughs> <good pair. laughs> <laughs> We yeah. had one riding. We did have a riding plow. <laughs> uh, we used two, maybe three horses on. But it was uh, a real experience because you're going down through there, <coughs> sitting there enjoying life, and all of a sudden you hit a rock, and your plow jumps over here, and, and your are over here, and so that was kind of an experience. But. If you had three uh, animals pulling it, could you put horses with your mules? Yeah, 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 we could. Really? Yeah. Now mules. One of the experiences with mules that, that I think about is they really are. Creatures of habit, and very much so. Mm -hmm. I was, I was grown. I went back home one time, and Dad said, "I want you to go over and pull some logs." And I've got a pretty new team here, but they're real good, and no problem. So we hooked them up, and I went over, and they tried to run away. They tried to do everything I could think. I mean, it was a battle all morning long. And I went to lunch, and I said, "Dad." 
I disagree. He said, "Not many said." I said, "You got him on the wrong side." Yep. He oh, said, yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah. I said, yeah. "When you when you harnessed him and hooked him up, you hooked him up the wrong way. You hooked him up backwards. So we hooked him up the other way, and all afternoon was just a piece of cake. Yep. They just pulled yep. up the so it's, so. it's they're used to doing it a certain way, and they'll do it that way. Tom. So now you said that some mules. Uh, respond to crowd noise? Is it? What do we yeah. think it is? Is it just the noise, or is it? It's just the noise, and the, they feed off that noise. It's, it's like adrenaline. It's like, like with the with Kitty. Like we're at the state fair or wherever we're at. Um, we we tra we travel with we travel with our stuff. I do demonstrations and seminars and about mules and and how to train your mule to jump or just you know mule stuff in general and when we go to Kansas Equifest or whatever you know and they're out there we're out there jumping and stuff just just the the everybody getting in and just yelling and hooping and hollering and it's like they had, they have their uh, favorite places to jump too Pedro yeah. Pedro yeah. don't like he don't like uh, Springfield Neither does Kitty. See, that was one of the things they that, got that these animal great big old fans that hang from the ceiling. Oh yeah. And yeah. Pedro, he's got his mind on them fans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and if he gets somebody that that's a working the jump, and if he don't like them, he don't want to jump. He'll, he'll step off either the right or he'll mm -hmm. step to the left. And you can tell. You can almost. We've been around each other long enough that we can almost tell. Kitty's done. Yeah. Yeah. Baxter's done. You can almost tell. We're, we're not jumping them, but we can almost tell when yeah. when that happens. Their whole their whole I attitude. Said, I'm going to get them this time. Their whole <laughs> attitude changes. The, the mules hold like when you know like Pedro is off. It's like he's done. Yep. He's gonna you're gonna get up there and he's Baxter's gonna jump and he's not and it's just you can tell by their attitude the last time they go to that jump. Is there a tensing of muscles? Yep. Yeah. 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 Or yeah. is it head movement? It, it just a combination of, of a little bit of everything, and they just they're like, it's like you're Baxter. Gonna, he'll tense up a little like, bit. His eyes start to turn a little red. Pea Ridge, Pea Ridge was really tense last year. Yeah, was. I was like, because I like I said, I am the only female that does this, and I'm jumping against you know the preacher and Jerry and um, Red. What's it? Um, We've, we didn't even mention Mr. Him. Fletcher. Mr. Fletcher. Mr. Good. Mr. Fletcher, yeah. his Fletcher. mules. Uh, they had his, his And where's Mr. Mules. Fletcher? He is in Arkansas. Okay. No, he's actually on vacation. I seen a picture yeah, of him. They're, on, they're the on the coast. The he actually won it year before yeah. last. Yeah. Um, and it was, it got down to me. With who? With Kitty. Kitty. Uh, preacher with Pedro. And then Mr. Fletcher's son. Was jumping his mules, and he had he had a pair that he yep. was jumping in, and it was down to the four of us, and it was like uh, the one one of his went out, and I'm like, oh. and then um, we got down to the three the, the three mules, and um, he had faltered the first time, and I'm like, oh, and then Dan went out. Well, he, he passed, Dan went out, and it was me and him. And I'm like, as soon as Dan went out, I'm like, I'm like turning around going, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, me and Pedro had already had a talk. Yeah. 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 And yes. To, to speak to what you're talking about, I've never been to one of these. I've heard about them all my life. I grew up in Mountain Grove, but I've never been to one until last year. And I'm pretty sure it was Pedro last year when Pedro was done walked up, almost acted like he was going to try to jump, and then just relaxed, took another step, and knocked the bar off with his nose. They will. And They'll you know, let you know when they're done. Um, and it's, I, it's, I can tell you guys do. He's, he's done, and oh, yeah. he had him try to jump. Bonita, to Bonita's uh, nickname is Dozer. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, do you, have you bought mules since last year? No, no. Oh, okay. Just a spectator. Tom? So is there any trash talking during these competitions? Do you ever no. know? A little bit here and there, See, but there is there is a little there is a little bit, but like 
you know, he said we're family, you know. What yeah. family doesn't trash talk? But, well, you when know. the preacher got sick this winter, <laughs> I, I told Cindy, do we need to go down there and help him or, yeah. or do whatever we need to do? Uh, he's like my father. You keep saying that. <laughs> I'm sorry, but far he is. Apart he is. Just, just saying. But still, uh, it, we're family. Jerry, are you the youngest jumper? No. I am the youngest. My wife is. I'm okay. 58. I guess Les is. Les, Les, is, Les is older than me. Les is. Yeah. 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 She's 29, I think. <laughs> she might be. I was not going to ask her her age. I know Bill's <laughs> kick, and I know you don't ask one of their ages. I, I will be 49 July 4th. Okay. July 4th. Wow. Yeah, we'll be trail riding that weekend. I'm, six, I'm 65. Are, are there uh, are there morning meals and afternoon meals and evening meal? I mean, does an individual meal is are some sort of slow to wake up, groggy in the morning? Or? Oh no, <laughs> Chucky. Chucky. Is. We got one little meal home in the morning. Forget it. Yeah, if you, if you want to go if you want to go riding or anything in the morning, you're yeah. You just forget, well, it. forget it. Forget it. Yeah. How many hours a day do you work with mules? I only mess with my jumpers maybe three or four times a week, okay. and maybe ten or fifteen minutes. They know what to do. Yeah. Okay. Now when I start, you don't one, practice very seldom. We do. We got a jump up. We got a jump out in the yard, and we we'll get out there like about what is the two weeks before we come yeah. here. We will we'll start, start playing with, with them. them, but like winter, winter we just, usually we don't do much. Put them in the pasture. Off season. Okay. Yeah. yeah. How it's about you, Richie? Uh, Pedro's kind of funny about practicing. He, he, <laughs> Pedro sounds kind of funny about several <laughs> things, but I'm not going to say he, that. Uh, you know, I can do demos and stuff like that with him, and, and he, uh, you know, he, he, sometimes he likes it, sometimes he doesn't. And uh, but but if he's in the mood, he'll jump. He's going to jump. Yeah. You, you know, he's, he when he's in the mood, you can tell by the way he's acting. Uh, he'll prance a little bit and. He, gets excited and uh, then I get excited. Does the order of the jumping make any difference at all? No, no. I tell you what I do, which is funny, and they probably think I'm just being silly, but uh, I don't let Pedro watch Ed's jump. <laughs> no, he's, he's serious. I don't. He, he I don't. Turn I'll, turn, I'll turn him right away. And then I, I, he don't know whether they've, they've done it or they, they haven't done it. And I started doing that with Clyde, and I tell you what, you can you can laugh if you want to. Them things are smart. Yeah. They're, they they yeah, are smart, and they, and they can get up to a certain height, and that you don't think they know two inches. You can, <laughs> they'll they'll stop at this one jump, and you can lower that down two inches, and they'll jump it. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Are you saying you don't want them to look because he might be intimidated, or? What? Well, if that, that deal didn't do it, I ain't doing it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Each person has their own way of doing it. That's the way I think. You, you know? may think I'm silly, but I, well, it's just, I, that's it's just, just the way like, I did it's it. It's just like trail riding. You come up to a you come up to a little like water crossing, and you got one horse that's going, mm, uh, no way. Then all but then, then you've got this other one that says, oh, okay. Well, then the rest of them everybody are. else will follow. And it's, it, I mean, it, that's. Then you get out the persuader. Yeah. Wrap it up. Wrap up. Yep. Thank you all so oh, much. This has well. been a real Thank pleasure. You. Thank you. Good luck to each of you. Thank you. <laughs>